inside untouched fantastic I remember making this as a kid uh, and despite my limitations then it came out extraordinarily well I was very pleased with it it was a very sturdy aircraft it was a very good looking aircraft and it was a solid model just hope I can match that today I say that quite often also you get the tractor with all the little trailers with bombs which is good fun Masses of parts, four engines. Somebody, a couple of films ago, somebody said, Come on, it's about time you did a four engine one. I said, I got a Sterling somewhere. Thought I'd never find it, but I did. And I'm desperate to get going on it. It's a damn good aircraft, ruined by, what's the word? You know, pen pushers. Um, can't think of the word. We'll come back to it anyway. Uh, paperwork and all of that because it had to fit in the small hangers of the day so they had to shorten the wings and that's only part of the problem so uh, there we go oh come on, I'm thinking good grief, I'm thinking of necromancy that isn't the word, well that, it's a word but that isn't the word I'm looking for just going back a moment um, it's got the unfortunate funky, trendy, cool Blur. Don't need that on a model box, do you? We're not trendy. We don't need to be. Because we are super cool. Anyway, uh, it's it's a, a bit of box art that has been beaten by others, but it is the whole image. The image as a whole is really powerful, isn't it? And what I would love to do one day, I'm, I think I've said this a couple of times before, is try and get the model to look like the image on the cover because that is not black it's a gorgeous rich dark brown which blacks often come out as in real life either blues or browns so uh, I'd love to do that one day but I haven't got the nerve now so it's going to come out as boring old black it was not black isn't boring is it? you know what I mean regular Regulation, standard conformist, as it should be, black. I do remember it being big, but yeah, I could, I could have put that there. But look at that, I've got my worn out old ruler, and it is well over a foot long. Fantastic. And I can't get all the parts on the table. <laughs> <laughs> which is brilliant and it comes with sort of sprues upon sprues what I'm trying to show there is the the fact that the sprue uh, has a little dimple in it so you can break them off and have them as individual sprues to make life much more manageable which I will be doing um, and there's a little tractor which I think is now part of a set which I've got somewhere Anyway, look at all that. Good grief, this is going to take a bit of doing, isn't it? Fair enough. So, as usual, the first step is to do um, bits which either need a bit of time to dry before you can move on, or while that's happening, other bits that won't interfere. So, um, one of the interesting things is uh, I remember these weren't a brilliant fit as a kid, 
and I had them all moving but they were a bit iffy whereas now it seems like the mould is on its last legs or was at the time uh, and they really don't fit very well at all and I, as usual as I say I'm not going to be playing with them so I won't wobble them up and down the one thing, can't remember if I said it, the one thing that I will try and do is get the uh, undercarriage to go up and down because rather like the um, Stevenson's rocket and did I do a Catalina? can't remember, I'll have to have a look Stevenson's rocket as a kid I got the wheels to go around and the pistons to go back and forth and I managed to do that again so I'm trying to keep up with my youth full self and the other one was the Catalina I managed to get the floats on the tips of the wings to go up and down which I believe I managed to do I can't remember I must check the Catalina thing anyway so I'm gonna try and get the undercarriage to go up and down even though as a kid I was very proud and used to show me mates to the point where I nearly broke the thing even though it is um, a good sign of model making skills I don't hold out much hope for this um, mold and at the time even at the time I was bothered by the fact that uh, the wheels didn't really retract fully so you always had this rather dangly pair of tires not quite looking right and I don't want to spoil the look of this aircraft so if we're getting that wobbly quality I might go back on my plan and uh, fix the wheels up and I've got bits of the various gun turrets going on I rambled too long there got bits of the gun turrets going on got to paint them all up paint up the figures um, obviously they're little things I can do while other things are going on I'm not going to get those to turn um, as I've said I'm not going to play with it. But the other thing is, I found with this, the fix on, on these, or the fit rather, on all of these, but this one in particular was so tight, I could hardly get... The, oh look, that sprung up, there you go, that's the perfect example. It keeps springing up, it's so tight the drum won't rotate and all sorts, and I, I, this, I'm not going to muck around with it. So I will just get on, is what I'm saying. Get on. Go on. Right, the time has come to put bits and pieces on the engine cowlings. Have I shown those? I don't remember. <clears throat> Maybe we'll have a look in a minute. Anyway, you get two types of things. Yeah, if that makes sense. He mumbled. I'm looking for a pen. I need a pen. Oh, a bright pink one. That'll be perfect. So we get the exhausts. We get a fairly standard four. But then you get two large and two small. And then the shadow isn't doing us any favours, is it? Then you get four small vents and four large vents. The instructions, as far as I can tell, and I've looked through as best I can, the instructions do not tell you which goes with which. So these four, do they go with those four? These four, do they go with those four? Is it vice versa? Or can you choose? So I'm going to choose. I'm going to have... I'm going to have these four because it's an interesting variety. No more than that. And I'm going to have those four because they have a long, sleek and graceful quality which suits the large engine and the long engine housing. How about that for a theory? Oh, I mean, intellectually stimulating or what? Fantastic. What are you doing, sunlight? It's all going wrong. So in the spirit of um, doing things in the wrong order, while other things dry I have now gone back to the interior um, which is only vaguely painted for a start uh, I've glued the kind of the base 
deck in. Other stuff is just suspended. I am not going to waste time and effort getting the gun turrets to move because I remember doing that as a kid and one thing that happened with this and many others is you wanted to show your mates how brilliant you are, you turned the gun turret and the guns broke off. So some of this is just balanced to get an idea of how and where the painting is going to go. I have painted the, the lower deck um, the wrong colour because I'd like to see if I can actually see it. <laughs> and I might carry this experiment on. Obviously being dark green it won't show up particularly brilliantly. Uh, but who knows with another one I might do it bright yellow. So there's various bits and pieces lying in place. Lots of painting to be done, particularly the top of that fella's head uh, and this other pilot who is the wrong pilot intentionally, so I've got a spare to put elsewhere. Um, uh, I l absolutely love these. Figures is an understatement. Characters. They are superb in so many ways. So I'd like to see at least him go into a different aircraft that deserves it. So maybe something like, uh, I think I've got another Wellington. I don't think it's got anybody, so I'm cobbling together some figures. And uh, If any aircraft deserves that guy, a Wellington does. So this is where we're up to so far. I will check that it all fits together with the other side, and then I'll start painting the fiddly bits. Here we go. And then it all came flooding back to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I kind of clipped the fuselage together, if you see what I mean, just held it together. I thought, yeah, not bad. And then started to see all the different bits that weren't going to go together. And it reminded me of being a young man building airfix kits, particularly the larger airplanes where the fuselage just seems to be made of two parts that are rather incompatible. What? Look at that. You see, this is, this is real nostalgia. All the splodge. I didn't put much glue on, intentionally, because I knew it was going to be a wrestling match. And still, we end up with that. It's not going to stay like that, obviously. Uh, but... Um, it <laughs> just didn't want to go together. I ended up using the pin and socket at this end to give me guidance. In which case, this side and this side of the tail, the base of the tail. Whoops, get your hand out of the way, man. Uh, wakey, wakey camera, come on. I'm going to have to buy a new one. Um, anyway, the base of the tail wouldn't line up at all. There was a pin and socket around about there that were nowhere near each other, so I had to cut it off. I cut another one off over this end. And the front doesn't want to go together at all. Not only all of that, but this side of the fuselage is convex. This side is concave. So one goes up and one goes down. I dealt with that and it's sprung again, so I'm going to have to put a tiny bit of fresh glue in and hold it, sti hold it still for longer and then leave the whole thing so that it dries sturdily and then come back to that bit, which is showing up the fact that, as you can see, or like I say, at the tail end I have made sure the pin and socket go together, which means they are as well aligned as possible. But there is a step. This side runs out further than that side. So there is a step there of nearly a millimetre. And all of this wrestling has caused the interior of the cockpit to swing because the lines, the ribs that run there and there to hold that framework in place don't line up. And I know I've got this in the right place because there's a tab at the bottom of the stairs. Can we see the stairs? Probably not. Anyway, there's a little flight of stairs going down there and that fits into a hole in the 
the um, lower deck. So it must be right and it shouldn't twist but it's had to twist so what I'm going to have to do is pick it out and realign it and then I'm going to paint the little men properly as for this bit here I mean a gap that big you can see is uh, the underside's fine So let's, God, heavens above, let's say I'm halfway through the gluing process for a second time around. I don't know if you can see this, but if you take, that's all a bit wobbly, you might have to, oh, you're not going to see this, hang on. I'm halfway through the gluing process on the fuselage, and I notice this. If you take a kind of horizontal line as the across the top of the fuselage, so if you say the top of the fuselage is a horizon, then as you can see the tails are all over the show. And that is because this may not be completely visible, the fuselage is twisted. Right, that's one of the reasons I've stopped halfway. Not only is it twisted, you might not be able to see this either, but it's bent. <laughs> Can you see that swing to the left there? My goodness, I would expect this from Hella. Uh, I think this was the end of this tooling, don't you? And we went on to. Past is new. I don't think they flogged this model any further. Um, I'll do me best. It's a it's a vintage jobby and um, it has a nostalgic quality and it's a lovely aeroplane. So I'll do what I can and then buy somebody else's version of it. Talking of Hella, somewhere in this box. There is a half-made Heller aircraft that I've put down for about two years to regain my inner calm. And now we're encountering similar problems with the Sterling. Don't even ask about the other stuff. All right, that's just, you know, <laughs> I am going to have a lie down in a darkened room. <laughs> Due to the shaky handedness of holding a long block of plastic by, uh, by the tip, I suppose you might call it, I have come up with a, an exaggerated diagram. So here's your vertical, here's your horizontal on the tailplane. We'll take that as the official level and then I've slightly, not a lot, exaggerated the uh, tilt the twist to the fuselage but then if you really want to we can do it that way around and you can see how the tailplane is well out it also bows and I was just doing this for myself really here's your central line perhaps dorsal line I was just trying to think how on earth again exaggerated but how on earth are the wings going to sit they'll probably sit there won't they just giving it different lines to show how things are going to go. That's going to be a struggle in the near future. But we will plough on for the sake of this glorious aeroplane and see what we can do. Um, they definitely needed to uh, withdraw this mould really, didn't they? So, on careful reflection, I am going to have a lie down in a darkened room. Uh, see you in a week or two then, I hope, if I get the nerve back. Quite like the, um, the weathering, shall we call it, on the side there. The whole thing's actually up for a proper paint. These are just like base colours, but I quite like that. That looks good. Anyway. 
Thanks for watching. Another wander into the marshes of disaster. And uh, see you again soon. <laughs>